to Romans chapter 1. I talked on this a couple weeks ago. I just want to review a little bit. You notice the sermon this morning is, Then How Shall We Live? That was a book written by a theologian named Francis Schaeffer. He realized the corruptness and the perverseness of the culture that he was going through. And he wrote a book on it. I'm not going to preach on the book this morning. But I'm going to share with you what we can do in this culture uh, when we have so much going on that maybe aren't likable by us. In Romans chapter 1, if you look, I talked a few weeks ago. If you look at verse 18, uh, let me think. Romans 1.18, oh, I've got the wrong there it is. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the re truth in unrighteousness. We're right now in the wrath of God because of what's going on. He's in, he is against all unrighteousness. Is there any unrighteousness in this country? It's all over the place, isn't it? We've had a three-step program to get to where we are today. First of all, we've had a sexual revol revolution. Then we have a homosexual revolution. And then as you're looking, chapter 1, verse uh, 20, let's see, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things that are not seemly. A reprobate mind is a useless mind. When you look at what's going on today with the transgenders and everything that's going on, that is a useless mind. So we're right there. Now, if you would, turn to Philippians chapter 2, and this is I'm going to talk about this morning. Philippians chapter 2, if you look at verse 12, every generation has an element which is crooked and perverted. Why is that? Anybody know? Why does every generation have an element that is crooked and perverted? Because of sin, right? We're seeing it really strongly today. Now, we have the responsibility to act as children of God through this time to shine as lights, as we're going to see in a minute, in the midst of this world. This is why we're here, folks. We're supposed to be lights in the darkness, and it sure is dark. God understands what we're going through. He does. He knows what we're going through. He is allowing it. He is the, portraying the wrath against this country, against all unrighteousness. Now, we all feel disappointed. We all feel in despair at the events of this generation. The word generation means the people that are living at this time. We find dis deep disappointment and despair in the events of what's going on. We're watching the power structure of this great country. It's being thrown away by people who are godless and contrary to scripture. Is that true? I should have my amen signs this morning, but I don't. It's a fact, and it's easy for us to become disappointed when we look around and we see what's going on. We see our country in deep sin and in wickedness. The marriage, the family, the media, law and order, the leaders who advocate fornication, homosexuality, transsexuals, pornography, riots, looting, and crime. Is that all going on in our generation right now? Are any of you discouraged or disappointed? Of course we are. We fear the future of ourselves, of our children, and our grandchildren if it keeps going on like this. 
We fear that persecution is going to be coming. Do you think it might? Absolutely. Those who hate the truth, those who hate the gospel, hate Christians. And they love to tell others that we are an unwanted agitator. Now, how should we respond to this? How should you and I respond? Okay, I already told you we're here because God placed us here. We're here because God knows what's going on. How are we supposed to live? How then shall we live? Look at verse 15, please. Chapter 2 of Philippians, verse 15. Well, we'll start with 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Okay? I'm going to talk to you this morning about how much we murmur and dispute against what's going on. That ye may be blameless and harmless children of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Okay? This is a time when this was written in the city of Philippi. The city of Philippi was the first European church that Paul founded in Europe. It was on a second missionary journey. The people were desperately poor, like we're going to be soon, okay? But were generous, giving out of poverty. There were false teachers. There were enemies of the cross. There were uh, people that were glorying in the shame of what they did. Is that true today? Yes. Life without God was prominent. Poor, persecuted, discouraged, worried, fearful. That's where we are right now, most of us. The word crooked, as you see in verse 15, comes from the word that we use for scoliosis. Scoliosis is of uh, the spine. It means your spine is bent, twisted, and distorted. So basically, they're a crooked generation. They're bent, twisted, and distorted. Now, this is exactly where God wants us to be. Do you understand that? If he didn't want us to be here, would he have allowed all this and would he have allowed you to live? No, he wants you to be here. John chapter 17, Jesus' prayer was, don't remove them from the world, just protect them from the evil one. And that's basically where we're at right now. We've got to live in this world, but again, how shall we live? Now, first of all, if you look in verse 15, who are we? That ye may be blameless and harmless children of God. Are you a child of God or a child of Satan? What are you? Child of God. So that's who you are in this crooked and perverted world. Okay? We love the truth. Secondly, who are we? Look at the next part of the verse. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. We're not supposed to be mumblers and complainers and antagonists. We're supposed to be what? Lights in the dark world. You can't be a light if you're always murmuring and complaining about what's going around you. You can't be. We're supposed to be lights in the world. Now, what are we supposed to do? Well, verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Basically, we're supposed in this crooked and perverse generation live in humility. We're not to be any more than just humbled because the humbled are exalted by the Lord. We're supposed to work out our own salvation, it says. 
We're supposed to talk about holiness. We're supposed to talk about sanctification, our salvation. We're supposed to talk about Christ-likeness and obedience to God's word. So basically, there's two things we're supposed to be. Humble and holy. Okay? Not mumblers and complainers and fearful all the time. We're supposed to hold fast the word of life. We're supposed to faithfully proclaim the word that God's life gives us in this dark and perverted, crooked world. That's why we're here, folks. That's why we're here. Why else are you here? To complain and mumble and be all the time anxious and fearful? No. Look at verse 18. 17 and 18. Yea, and if we offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. How many of you are rejoicing over this? What does Paul say we're supposed to do? We're supposed to be joyful and rejoicing, not mumblers and complainers. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. It's not easy. It's not easy when you see all this junk going on to be happy, rejoicing. It's not easy, but that's what Paul said we're supposed to do. All right? We're supposed to stop complaining to God about your circumstances and your situation. Look at verse 14. Go back up if you would. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Rather than always hating what's going on, rather than murmuring, complaining about the government, rather than worrying and being fearful about the future, we are supposed to be joyful and rejoicing, realizing that you're here for a purpose, and you're here because God placed you here. Do you think he didn't know what was going to happen in this world today? Of course he does. Of course he does. Stop complaining to God about your situation. Stop blaming God for your situation and the situation of the world. You are who you are. You are where God wants you to be. So how about if we become lights in this dark world rather than murmuring and complaining? Don't argue with God about his will. Is it his will that you're here right now and what's going on in America? Of course it is. He's sovereign. It's his will. God is our rock and our protector. Stop grumbling and complaining. Stop questioning God. When you do, you're questioning his will and his plan. Now I want to just do one more thing when we're done. Turn to Psalm 37, please. You're not the first people that have experienced this. Psalm 37 is written by David. And I want you to look, if you would, starting at verse 7. Well, let's start at verse 1, because this is what I call a ladder to get out of the hole we're in. Okay? What is on the ladder? Steps. These are steps that you can take to get out of this doldrum that we find ourselves, realizing God put us here, God wants us here, so let's act like we're children of God. First one, verse 37, fret not. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to death. Fret not of evildoers. Look, if you would, verse 3. Trust in the Lord, second rung of the ladder. Don't be afraid. Who do we trust? The Lord. Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the, in the Lord. Let's be a little happy about the Lord. Let's be telling others about the Lord. Commit thy way, verse 5, unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Because a man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Some of us can't sleep at night because our mind keeps going and worrying. 
Verse 11. I'm sorry, verse, let's look at verse, tw- uh, let's see, verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth, shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked that we're facing today plotteth against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Is that true? Is that what's happening? The wicked, verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The folks that are right now wicked, perverse, crooked, their day is coming, isn't it? It's coming. Verse 14. The wicked have drawn out the sword, have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as are upright in their manner of life. Folks, it's going to be too long before we're going to be poor and needy, more so. Verse 16, or 15. Their swords shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Remember that verse. The little that we have is better than the wickedness of many. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Do you believe that this morning? Is he going to take care of us? Of course he is. Why fret? Why worry? Verse 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. You know the wicked people in the world today? There's another psalm that talks about why do good things happen to bad people? Why is it that bad people have so many good things happen to them and we don't? The conclusion of Asaph in that psalm is their day is coming. We're going to be in heaven. Where are they going to be? In hell. Which is worse? Hell. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. You see, we don't have it so bad. We really don't, because you have the Lord, and these people don't. So how about we dwell on that? How about we look at that instead of hoping the president dies of COVID. Hmm. I've heard that. Is that the right way to act as children of God? Nope. Be light and realize that God has placed you here. You're right where he wants you to be and you got to trust him. Maybe that's why it's all happening. So you trust him more. All right? All right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this portion of scripture that David went through that can be applicable to us, that Paul went through in the church in Philippi, and Lord, help us to take it to heart and try and apply it to our lives. It's in your name we pray. Amen.